Okay, welcome back um, to the the uh, next tutorial in the DirectX tutorial series. Actually, um, yes, I'm go I'm going back to the DirectX tutorial uh, series, and what this tutorial will be is we're going to do a quick run through and recreate the um, the game or application class from scratch again, and then we're going to draw a uh, a 3D triangle. Um, I'm going to discuss how to do how to render. Um, to the to the screen in DirectX, so this is going to be a very long tutorial. So again, skip around through the video if you want. Um, so to start, uh, create a new project, C++. I'm gonna, it's going to be an empty project. I'm going to call this uh, D3D9 Tutorial uh, One. So here we go, we got our blank project. Again, like before, add a new item, C file call winmain. We're going to include windows.h. We're going to set up the winmain entry point. Takes an h instance. There we go. So if you follow that and build it, it should succeed. So there we go. Now, before we start continuing, what we're going to do is go into the project. And um, I'm assuming that you have the DirectX SDK installed. Um, now, with uh, Windows 8, um, it comes on the computer. It's, it's built into the Windows header file. But for anyone using Windows 7, um, you need to go download it. Um, just type in Microsoft DirectX SDK. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll go and to the include, I go to my program files, down to Microsoft SDK, click on the include folder, hit OK, apply. Same thing with the library. I explained this uh, in more detail in one of the previous DirectX tutorials, but I'm still going to quickly go through it anyway. Click Library. Make sure you click x86. I'm assuming most of you have an x86 um, architecture. Um, and we go to Linker and Input, and we're only going to add two things: d3d9.library and d3dx9.library. Hit OK, hit Apply, and Build it should succeed. So here we go. So now we're going to create our application classes. So I'm going to go to Header File, Folder, Add New Item. It's going to be a Header File. I'm going to call it D3D App. I'm going to include, again, Windows. And I'm also going to include D3D9.header and include d3dx9.h now it's not going to show up IntelliSense probably won't show it but if you go into external dependencies and go down you should see all these d3dx's and 4's and stuff like that um, it's there, it's just IntelliSense is pretty dumb um, class d3d app there we go now our public stuff we have our constructor D3D app takes an H instance, a uh, destructor, virtual D3D app, um, our main uh, application loop, run, it returns an int. That's basically the uh, the code that determines what happens when it's to make your application uh, close itself. Um, and then some uh, framework methods. Basically, there's going to be virtual methods that we overload in inheriting classes. So we're going to have a initialization method. We're going to have a 
couple voids one that takes that um, update now this equals zero um, what that just means is it's a virtual function but it's something called a pure virtual function which means if you're creating a class of, of type d3d app you must override the that method same thing with uh, with render because you know each application needs to have its own type of render and update um, and finally the l results uh, message procedure function takes um, takes a handle to a window a unsigned integer message a w param and an l param Here we go. So that's it for uh, methods. Um, so protected, uh, these are going to be the attributes that we need. Um, we need, first off, we need a handle to a window. I'm using Hungarian notation, by the way. Uh, H instance, that's the when I do M underscore. Um, and then the names. It just tells me that um, that it's a handle when I put H. And same thing if I put P. If I do for pointers, as you'll see. Um, next is we're gonna want some uh, unsigned integers. UI um, client with unsigned int client height. Um, and we're going to want a string. Now, in order to get strings, you need to actually import or include um, string. So, because we want a title for our application. So, std string um, app title. And that's pretty much it for our. Uh, for our base attributes. Um, so now we're going to have some methods. This one is going to initialize the app window. So bool init window. This one is going to initialize direct 3D. Bool init direct 3D, and that's it for methods currently. Um, so there we go. That's pretty much it uh, at the moment, because um, we're going to do the window specific stuff first, and then we're going to come back and add DirectX uh, functionality. So we're going to add the implementation file to the source files folder. It's a it's a C plus plus file, um, and we're going to call it the same thing. Ether D app. I'm going to include d3dapp.h and now we're going to implement stuff. So we first got to implement the constructor here. We're going to set app instance equal to that passed in instance. We're going to set app window equal to null. Um, which remember null all capitals is essentially defined as zero. So it's equivalent to doing that. Uh, we're going to set the client width equal to a base 800 and client height equal to a base 600. If you've watched my mono, um, well, mono game actually I think does 600 by 400, but the um, my some of my other tutorials I I start with 800 by 600 as the client size. Um, for app title, I'm just going to call it Direct X9 Application all caps so it stands out uh, and there we go that's all we need for right now um, now quickly we're just going to implement that destructor nothing here's where you release objects from memory um, we don't really have any pointers or anything currently so uh, here's the um, main application loop 
basically this is the main message loop. Um, so what you need for the main message loop is you need a message structure and we're going to initialize everything in it to zero. This is quick and uh, a way to quick, quickly initialize um, a structure to basically the empty set. If you have done set theory um, in school, basically this is the notation for, for a set that contains only the empty sets. So. Um, finally, while uh, wm quit doesn't equal message dot uh, message, what we're going to do is we're going to peek at each message being sent through the pipeline. We're going to remove them after we peek them. Peek at them. Um, we're going to translate the message dispatch the message and then otherwise here's where we're going to update that's in zero for now and then render there we go so um, now if this while loop ever breaks out that means our application just ended or was given the command to quit so we're going to want to return uh, static cast to an int um, the message w -cram. Now remember, if I'm going fast, you can always you know pause the video and catch up with the code. Um, I'll also give a link to where I post the source for all of this code. Um, now in the comics, uh, in the uh, descrip description info box. <coughs> okay, uh, time out. I'm just gonna. Drink a little water. Mm. There we go. Okay. So the next uh, method is going to be the initialize method. Basically, here we're just going to check window creation. So if not in it uh, window, we we'll want to return false. Because that clearly failed, and check uh, direct three D initialization. So if not in it direct three D, return false as well. Otherwise, return true. Um, so if this if this method succeeds, then everything should be fine. So next up is the actual creation of the window. So here we go. Now the first step is you want to create a structure called um, a window class. So window class ex wcex. We want to zero memory that um, basically pass in a reference to it. Size of window class ex. Now what zero memory does is essentially does what I was uh, talking about before. Um, basically sets it, you know, sets every every single value to, to the null so that you can you can set yourself each value. So uh, CLS extra we don't need. Uh, window extra you don't need to care about. The um, CB size is equal to size of window class ex um, basically if they ever ask for the size of something use size of and then of whatever type so the complete size of this structure in bytes is the size of the actual struct itself so makes sense right it's kind of circular um, so uh, next thing is style so class style uh, h redraw Class style vertical redraw. So what these are is basically saying like uh, the class should. It's describing how the, the window should react to um, redrawing. So if it draws redraws horizontally or vertically, now we we use both. It doesn't really matter because uh, we're using direct x, which overrides all of that. So the um, h instance set to the app instance. Now the next thing we need to set is the window proc. Now the window procedure function is the 
message procedure function that we de defined here. However, there's a problem because this requires type uh, window proc. Now we all we created was a, a method that returns a L result, um, which they're incompatible. So what we're gonna have to do is create basically an empty namespace up here um, and create a global pointer to uh, D3D app. So basically, it's gonna be a D3D app pointer, global pointer to uh, D3D app. And we're just gonna set this in our initialization to this. So it's equal to this, this one. And then we're gonna define a callback function, main window procedure. We're gonna pass in those same things. And we're going to forward the messages. Um, so we're just going to return that global pointers message procedure. So there we go. And now, since we have that, we can use the main window procedure function that we declared globally. Okay. So the next thing, the background. Uh, no, let's do the cur uh, the icon and cursor for it first. So each icon, which is the icon that um, displays down here, um, load icon, pass in null for the H instance, and then ID I application, ID for the icon, WCX, we're going to do H cursor is equal to load cursor, again null, and this time ID C, ID of the cursor, arrow. Next is the H uh, brush for the background. So this is what the um, the window client will be cleared to. So get stock object um, null brush. We're going to use null brush. Uh, remember to cast that as an H brush because get, getting the stock object just returns literally just an object. Um, and then null brush is uh, a def definition of the ID. So then we're going to want the menu name equal to uh, null because we don't have any menu really. Um, the class name, just name it like something like a D3D app window class. WCX. Um, finally, the last things we need are just basically the small icon which again is going to be exactly the same as the bigger icon so IDI application and there we go now we need to register that class so if not register class EX and WCX What we want to do is display a message box. Um, pass in null for the window, the, the parent window. Pass in, you know, say something descriptive, like failed to register window class. And then pass in null for the last two things. Um, and then we want to return false, because clearly it failed. And this, this error handling right here will help you greatly. This, I've gotten so many messages from people like, saying, you know, I don't know why the program's, you know, breaking or not working, even though they, they see it um, work in the video, so they get frustrated, and I don't blame them. Um, so if, if you do this error handling, then you'll, you'll save yourself a lot of headaches. So now what we need to do is we need to adjust the uh, window um, or cache um, requested uh, width and height. Because we up here wanted a window client window that's 800 by 600. However, we can't if we pass those in. The that's not going to be correct because the window also includes the um, the uh, the menu title bar as well as the small bars on the side. So what we need to do is create a rectangle structure. Set it equal to at zero zero. 
with a width of the client width and height of the requested client height. We need to call a method called adjust window rect. We need to pass in R. Um, pass in uh, this the style now. Um, this is uh, something that we forgot to actually add as a basically the way windows work is you pass in a style um, now overlap window is the standard it's a window that um, can resize uh, has the minimize maximize box the title etc etc now for these tutorials we're always going to basically use overlaps as well as caption as well as um, system menu and finally minimize box um, now this is a, a, a bitwise operator or yeah I think it was um, so basically you you're combining all of these to make your the uh, the specific window style that you want because um, we don't want the thing to be able to be resized because it's quite complicated um, to resize geometry when a user like stretches the screen and everything okay so now that the rectangle has been adjusted for the correct size what we need to do is cache the width and that's equal to the right of that rectangle the right side minus the left and the height is equal to the bottom minus the top so there we go so now we can actually create the window um, so what we're going to set is our app window equal to create window and remember this class name it must be the same it has to be the same so you're better off just copying and pasting what you wrote here in there next is the window name now remember we have our application title and this requires a uh, C string so you're gonna have to get the C string uh, representation of that finally our style um, so let's just copy that all in. Um, actually, to make it easier for you and make it more, um, more, so you can play around with it. Let's go into the um, into the header file for this class. Let's create something called a D word object and call it Windows Style. And then in the constructor. We can set window style equal to that. So now down here, all we have to do is we can get rid of this large monstrosity and just call window style. Same thing here. We'll just pass in, uh, not that, pass in window style. So now it's asking for x position, y position. Now I showed this in my previous tutorials, um, and I'm going to show it again. To, pos to position the application always in the center of the screen every time you run it. A lot of games do this. Um, I know Skyrim does it. Um, a lot of most applications actually do it. Um, they center themselves directly in the center of the screen. So uh, what you do is you use get system metrics and you do sm system metrics cx screen. So it basically gets the dynamic dimensions of the your current desktop screen and you subtract from that you divide it by two and then subtract from it the width of your window divided by two and then for the the height you do the same thing but see y screen so you're in the y dimension and you subtract the height divided by two and then it requires the width and the height and then finally you can pass in null for the parent Null for the menu, our app, application instance for the instance, and then finally null for the last parameter. And there we go, we get no errors. And then we want to check if window was created. So we do if not m application window, so if that returns uh, zero, um, what we want to do is we want to throw a message box, pass in null again, say failed to create window, 
Um, so if you see that, you clearly know that, hey, we failed to do that. And then just return false. So finally, what we want to do is if this all worked, we want to show our window. So we call the method show window. We pass in our application window and we pass in for the int um, SW show, which is the standard window uh, show code. Um, so, and then we return true. So here we go. So this should uh, work. Um, so now what we need to do is quickly flesh out the other methods. So we had the init direct 3D. For now, we're just going to return true. Um, we'll fill that in a little bit. Uh, next is the the uh, the message procedure function. We want to do a switch on the, that u integer, the unsigned integer, which is the message. Then we want to do a case if wm destroy, so if the window is told to destroy itself, we want to post a quit message, pass in zero, and then return zero. And then at the very end, we always want to return the default window procedure with passing in all the parameters. So this is basically what will allow, because uh, the way the way Windows programs work is, um, the way Windows operating system in general works is it's, it's just constantly sending messages from the operating system to the applications that run. Um, and like, here's where you catch those different messages, such as like keyboard input, etc. Um, so that's about it for what we have to do here. Um, so now we can go into our main and we can actually include our d3d app header file and we can create a class called test app which extends public d3d app and then we're going to create a bunch of public stuff we're going to create the constructor test app takes in an h instance the destructor Finally, uh, the methods. Um, so remember, we have to we had to override a bunch. So in it, just getting overridden. Uh, update. Hmm. We might have forgotten something, but. And then let's first build this to see if there were any errors. Ah, yes, sorry, that has to be a return. Completely forgot. Yeah, so you return the, the default window pro procedure. Um, so now if you go in here, um, also, if you wonder why I'm doing this, basically what this is, this this isn't necessary at all the override keyword that's just uh, for me um, as a visual studio if you put that there um, it just it's good for visualization because you know that you are definitely overriding these so yeah that's basically that so now what we're going to do is actually fill these out um, so test app calls the the initial uh, the constructor of the other one. This is how you call the base constructor. Um, it's different if you were, are coming from um, like C sharp or uh, Java. Um, C plus plus is different. So finally, we're going to implement test apps uh, in those initialization method basically all we're going to do is we're going to check to see if e through d apps in it fails and if it does we're just going to return false otherwise we're going to return true and um, and now you know you might think well this isn't very descriptive but remember all the uh, the error handling is done in the initialization method of the other one so um, of each respective method. So finally, test app. We're gonna have uh, 
update takes in float, does really nothing. And finally, test app render does pretty much nothing. Um, so here is where we're going to first let's do a quick build, see if everything is working correctly. There we go. Always build frequently, by the way. Um, so we're still going to keep that, but up here we're just going to create a test app pointer t app equals new test app. Pass in the h instance right here. Pass that into here. If not t app in it, so try and initialization initialize it. Otherwise, if it fails, just return one. Um, and then what you want to do is return t app run. So there we go. So we do all our initialization, then we call the the application loop. So if we run this, we should see our uh, window pop up. So here you go. You have your DirectX application window. Um, so now we need to do 3D. Uh, direct 3D. <clears throat> so, how are we going to do this? Well, what we're going to first need to do is um, create some DirectX uh, attributes in our uh, window, in our um, app class. So here we go. Um, we're in our app class. Underneath all this window stuff, we're going to create some DirectX attributes. You only really need a couple. Now, the, the ones you need are I, Direct3D9, pointer. These all have to be pointers, by the way. Um, pointer to uh, Direct3D. You're going to need what's called a I, Direct3D, device 9. And I'll explain what these do in a second. Call this device 3D, and you're going to want a D3D present parameter structure. Call that M D3D PP. That's pretty much all you need. Um, so, uh, what is what do these do? You, you're probably asking. Well, the this first one, this pointer to Direct 3D, this is used. Pretty much exclusively just to create the uh, device. Um, this is the most important thing with DirectX 9, the device, because this is what you use. It's basically a interface to your graphics device, um, and it allows you to draw and render 2D and 3D stuff. Uh, present parameters uh, is basically a structure that defines. Um, how things are drawn, like the, the formats, um, the back buffer, how many buffers you have, um, the swap chain. Essentially, it's basically the swap chain. Um, and what a swap chain is, is with rendering um, graphics, uh, if you only had one, if you only had basically one buffer, um, you'd get like half of the image would be rendered while half of it wouldn't because it wouldn't be able to render fast enough the entire thing. So what you do is you have usually everything's double buffered. So you have two buffers, one that uh, caches things to it. And then while the front buffer is rendering, you the back buffer is loading and then it just constantly swaps. So it's a, it's a circular re relationship. Um, so, uh, to start, um, we're just going to implement that one method that we have left, the init direct 3 d So in here, first we're going to get interface to Direct3D. So what we're going to do is set our pointer to Direct3D equal to D3D create, I mean, Direct3D create 9. And what you pass in here is D3D SDK version. And you always pass that in. Basically, this just checks what version of um, DirectX you're using. The numbers really don't mean anything. Uh, and it returns the created Direct3D interface object. So, and by the way, these are what they call COM objects, um, component object model 
modify interfaces. Um, okay, and then what we need next is to check to see if that actually was created. So if not, uh, Direct3D, uh, message box, null, failed to create Direct3D, com object, null, null, return false. So there we go. If that does succeed, now we're down here. Now the next thing we want to do is check uh, device capabilities. Um, now, why are we going to check the device capabilities? Basically, it really doesn't matter too much nowadays, but back in the day, computers didn't all have graphics hardware that could handle lighting and, and such. So this is kind of like a legacy thing I'm showing you, but you should always do it anyway if you're like actually professionally doing this. Um, you should always check the device capabilities whenever you're whenever you're trying to do something that you th you would think not all devices might be able to do. So first we need something called D3D Dev Caps Dev Caps Nine or D3D uh, dev caps or wait sorry huh. d3d oh caps 9 sorry yeah d3d caps 9 I forgot what it was called um uh, and just call that dev caps or no m d3d dev caps okay so here we go we get this now the uh the pointer to Direct3D is going, there's a method called get device caps. Um, you can pass in D3D adapter default for that, which is essentially also equal to zero. So you can just pass in zero for that. Um, the device type, now, the device type, um, I'm assuming everyone has hardware devices. Um, really, you should always put hardware device here anyway, um, but there are checks that you can do to check to see if someone really doesn't have a hardware device, but nowadays everyone does, because every computer comes with, like, an Intel chip, so. Um, and finally, uh, you pass in the reference to, um, the dev caps, so that you can store it. So now what we're going to do is you're going to create an integer called VP, which stands for Vertex Processing. Um, and this is basically what we're checking. We're going to do a bitwise operation on the dev caps member of this structure. And so that's the bitwise operator. Um, bitwise and. And uh, D3D dev caps. Hardware transform and light. So if this succeeds, basically if these both if both of these are true, so once once uh, bitwise and it and it together, they're true. What we want to do is set VP equal to D3D create hardware vertex processing. Otherwise, we want to set for VP equal to D3D create software vertex processing. So essentially, another uh, name for hardware transformer and light is basically that it supports shader model um, 2.0 or whatever, um, and lighting, so hardware transformer and lighting. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is actually fill out um, the present parameters. So uh, what we're going to do is zero memory. Again, the M D three D there D three D P V um, and size of D three D present parameters, and let's look at these. So it's got a bunch of stuff. It's got all this. Um, it's got buffer count, buffer format, all this. Um, the first two that we know that are pretty easy to explain is the back buffer width. That's essentially just our client width. And our client height. 
Okay, um, so the next thing that we should do, um, windowed, we know that this is going to be true because I'm not doing full screen currently. Um, the back buffer count is set to 1. Now this is, this is confusing for some people. It already starts at 1 because you can't render anything without a back buff without a buffer in the first place. So if you if you add a back buffer, that means it's essentially double buffered. So you're using two buffers. Um, so always set that to one. Um, you never need more than one, like unless you're doing something insane. Um, the format, of course, would be D3D FMT A8. R8, G8, B8. Essentially, this is just 32 bit format. So, 8 bits um, for each, you know, alpha, red, green, blue. So, 32 bit back buffer format. Um, what we need to do is uh, we need to, we have the count, we have all that. Um, multi sampling. Now, multi sampling is essentially um, uh, it. Basically, you know anti-aliasing. Well, well, aliasing is when you know you try and draw a straight line with with pixels, and you get like a step up, step um, like steps effect, staircase effect. Uh, it's all jaggedy. Well, anti-aliasing tries to um, blend it together to make a straight line. That's what multi-sampling does in in a three D sense. It it samples pretty much everything down and makes things rounder. Um, it it takes a huge hit on performance so what we're really going to do is um, use no multi sampling because what we're doing is, is really doesn't require it so we're going to set the quality to zero as well um, we're going to also um, set the H device window to our application window we're going to set the um, the flags to zero we're going to set the. Uh, we're going to enable auto depth depth stencil. And we're going to set the um, the auto depth stencil format to again D three D FMT. Um, and this one is going to be D. So for depth depth twenty four stencil eight. It's probably the most popular um, depth stencil format. So twenty four bits for for the depth and eight bits for the for the uh, stencil, so uh, and that's a very advanced topic anyway, so I'm not really going to cover that right now. Um, nor do I have the ability to. So uh, D3D uh, full actually wait. Um, what is that? D3D yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, D3D present rate default. That's where we're going to set the full screen. We're not doing full screen anyway, so currently, for right now. Um, the presentation interval should be D3D present interval immediate. That's the fastest. Um, the swap effect should be D3D swap effect discard. Um, and I think we got everything that we needed. We did the auto depth stencil format, buffer count format, um, height width enabled. Yes, 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 yes. Yep, we're good. So there we go. That's uh, that's good. So now we're just the last thing we need to do is create the device. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the um, we're gonna use our uh, pointer to direct 3D to create device. Now the da adapter, I'm passing in zero or D3D adapter default. The dev type is remember D3D dev type. Pal, which means hardware accelerated. The focused window is um, H app window. The behavior flags are. Um, RVP vertex processing. The presentation parameters is a reference to our D3 D3D present parameter structure, and finally we need to pass in a reference to our device 3D pointer.
So there we go. So now if not M device 3D, so if that failed, we want to also display a message box saying, hey, that totally failed. Failed device creation. And then pass a null for the last stuff. And then just return false if that that fails. Um, so there we go. So the next thing also, um, which I'll explain later. So uh, so here we go. Now everything should work correctly. So if, if you want to test this, what we can do is in render, we can go to our device 3D and we can call clear, pass in zero for the count, pass in zero for the rectangles, do D3D clear target, and D3D clear Z buffer, um, pass in uh, D3D color XRGB. We're, we'll just clear it to lime green. Um, pass in 1.0 F for the for the uh, Z buffer um, depth and zero for the stencil. And then finally, if you ever want to present to the screen what you were just rendering, you got to call D3D um, or device 3D present. So if we run this, cross our fingers, it should um, clear it to lime green. So there you go. So now you have lime green going. And this is all from scratch using DirectX um, 9. Now, uh, of course we want to do some, some stuff that's, that's more, you know, cooler. Um, so that's what we're going to do right now. Um, we're going to uh, do some 3D, some very basic 3D. Um, so to do that though, first we want to create a utility header file. Now, um, we're going to be using this a lot, so basically we're just going to call it D3D Util. So it's going to be a header file, utility. We're going to create a namespace called D3D Color, Colors. Um, and ignore that error. It's, it's just saying, oh, you never included it. Mm, what's going on? Um, and of course, also, you're going to have to include um, D3D9.h. And might as well include um, D3DX9.h, just in case if you need anything from that too, because we might in the future. Um, and what is this namespace going to do? Well, basically, we're going to declare some some uh, common colors um, in here. So now D3D, what I first should show is if we go back to where we used um, in here. D3D color XRGB is defined as a D3D color object. Now, if we look at D3D color, um, oh, I can't hover over it because of this, this error. Well, basically, actually, there's a way for me to get rid of that error right now. We know we're going to be using it at some point in here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to include D3D utility. Now if I build this, oh, well, it's not going to, it's going to fail building because of that. Build succeeded. Eh, it's still going to give that error, whatever. I hate when it does that. Um, basically, what we're going to do is create some constant D3D colors and set them equal to D3D color ARGB. And what D3D color ARGB is going to take in is it takes in an alpha, red, green, and blue. So for alpha, we're just going to pass in 255. We're going to pass in 255 for red and 0 for green and blue. And we're going to call this red. So there's red. Now we have D3D color uh, lime, which we already used. Um, ARGB takes 255. 0 for red, 255 for green, and 0 for blue. We have const D3D color blue, which is D3D color ARGB 255, 0, 0, 255. 
And there we go. Now, if we go into WinMain, what we should be able to do now is we should be able to go D3D colors. Oh, sorry. D3D colors. And pick any of these. Now, let's pick blue. And run. Now we're cleared to blue. Let's pick red. Now we're cleared to red. So if you can go through, you can you can create a massive list of all the possible colors, and now you can use them using DirectX by just referencing the namespace D3D colors and passing in a color. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the common um, color that uh, is used for X and A called cornflower corn blue, and that's equal to D3D color ARGB 255 in the alpha, 100 for red, 149 for blue, I mean for green, and 237 for blue. Um, so if we go back in here and I select cornflower blue, we run. There we go, we got our nice cornflower blue, which looks similar to XNA. Um, so there we go, so now we're ready to start um, doing 3D. Now, uh, 3D is interesting because basically rendering things in 3D is you're taking things within a 2D viewport, um, essentially 2D images, and it's almost like an infinite number of 2D images going into your screen. That's what 3D literally is by the graphics card. The graphics the graphics device looks at it as a 2D image, a bunch of them going infinitely in the Z direction. Um, so in order to do that though we need something called a viewport um, that will define how we look at the the, the world. So um, what we're going to do is right under create device, we're going to create something called D3D viewport 9, called viewport. We're going to again zero memory it. And viewport, we're going to get a uh, reference to it. Of course, it's size of uh, D3D viewport 9. And we're going to fill some of these things out. Now, see, it's, it's only got a few members. It has an X position, which should always start at 0. So 0.0f zero zero dot y equals 0.0f. Zero I think these are floats. And uh, they're D words, so they should probably not be floats. If you're going to get some errors. Um, viewport dot uh, width should equal to um, client width. Viewport.height should equal to client height. And finally, viewport.minz should equal 0, and viewport.maxz should equal 1, of course. Yeah, so um, there you go. Now, to set this, because I mean, all you did was create the, the viewport, you didn't actually do anything. Um, we need to do is call tell the device to actually set the viewport, and all that does is it takes the viewport. So now we're, uh, when we run, you're still going to see, see the same thing, but it is essentially using that viewport that we initial initialized. Um, so now, if you what you might be thinking, then what's the point of this? Well, let's say you are uh, you have a multiplayer game and four players you need, you want to do split screen well each one of them needs to have their own viewport that's what this is you'd have four of these and split them up um, across the screen um, so there we go so that's done um, so what else do we need well most of our work now is going to be done in WinMain um, it's going to be done using this test application so uh, if you've watched my, my recent mono game tutorial uh, that I did about 3D geometric primitives, that's a good primer on this if you want to go look at that quickly. Um, 3D, 3D objects are made up of um, what are called vertices. Now vertices are essentially just points in space. 
um, if you take your finger and just like point somewhere at the very tip of your finger, that would be a vertex. Um, and what are what models are, are or meshes? Meshes are made up of thousands and thousands of vertices, and there are uh, and triangles basically because these vertices, the point of them being there is that every three vertices is a triangle and then every triangle um, if you have enough triangles you can make something that resembles an actual object um, that was like the, the brilliance behind graphics back in the 70s when they, when they figured out hey we can put we can put a bunch of triangles next to each other and we can create a, a sphere or create a uh, you know complex objects cylinder things like that and nowadays with things like tessellation you can do a lot um, so but there is no um, vertex class you have to actually we're gonna have to create a struct now what we're gonna want to do is create a vertex structure and what does a vertex have well a vertex should have a position so that should have an X Y and Z as its position um, so you you'd be able to render uh, basically just a bunch of points but that's kind of lame right like if you wanted to just render maybe a wireframe object all you all you'd really need is is some vertex but see how we have this utility we have all these d3d colors so we can also add d3d color and this turns this into from a vertex position object to a vertex position color so now we have the structure called vertex position color which has both a position and a color um, now that's that's all cool right well direct 3d the way it works unlike mono game um, you can't just you know what you do just take take the structure and plug it into a vertex buffer um, which I'll get to in a second um, and then render the render the object you have to have something called a flexible vertex format in FVF um, or a D3D FVF. Now, as you can see, Direct 3D flexible vertex formats, they're already defined for us. It's not like we have to create them. What they, what they are is there's a bunch. There's diffuse, there's normal, there's um, all these textures, ones, text, text, text 6, text 7, all these different textures. There's XYZ. That's the one that we're going to be using, especially. Um, so what we want to do is, in this structure, we want to have a, oops, a static const d3d fvf, um, or rather fvf. Um, actually, yeah. Um, a D word because they're F flexible vertex formats are essentially D words. Um, FVF flexible. So this vertex position color has its own flexible vertex format. Now this it's not set at all. So out here we want to go const vertex position color FVF equals D3D FVF XYZ D3D FVF diffuse. Now what diffuse is is essentially um, that also has to be D word, sorry. D word. Um, XYZ diffuse is color. Just whenever you hear diffuse, just think color. Color, color, color. XYZ of course you know is position, but um, if you have, you know, fifth grade algebra or geometry. Um, so that's all we need to, to create our ver ver vertex uh, structure. So now we can, using uh, these vertices, we can create objects. Now, what you need to create objects is you need something called a vertex buffer and an index buffer. Now these are created in Direct 3D um, by doing I Direct 3D vertex buffer 9. So I'll call that VB and uh, index buffers.
index buffer, IB. Now what a vertex buffer does is what you do is you take a collection of a list of vertices that make up triangles and you want to um, render them. Well, your graphics card is what's going to be rendering, rendering them. Um, but how does your graphics card read them? That's what the vertex buffer is for. What you do is you declare a list of uh, vertices, then you bind them to a vertex buffer, and then bind that vertex buffer to the graphics device. And then it'll go and it'll look at the vertex buffer that you binded to it, and it'll be like, hey, cool, let me let me make these triangles. And it'll, it'll read them and then form the triangles together. Um, the index buffer is what tells it the order um, to 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 read the read them because let's say you wanted to create a cube. How many vertices are there in a cube? There's 36. There's 36 vertices. However, how many unique vertices are there in a cube? Well, if you're only using a a uh, colors, there's really only you uh, eight unique vertices. So your vertex buffer would only consist of eight vertices. However, your index buffer would still have the, the 36 indices and it will select from those to create it. It makes it really fast and really efficient. Um, I see some tutorials on the internet where they actually, they do out for a cube all 36 vertices uniquely, um, which is, which is a terrible idea. So, and they don't use an index buffer. Um, so here, so to do this, basically, what we need to do is we need to, um, in our initialization method, right in here, here's where we're going to initialize all of the vertex stuff. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a vertex position color um, array called verts, and we know uh, for a triangle, there's only three vertices. Um, there's three connected lines. Um, so, um, what we're going to need is we're going to need to create these. However, in order to do this, though, your structure needs to have um, some constructors. So, we're going to create the default constructor, and we're also going to create one that takes in a float x, y. Z and a D3D color C. And we're going to set X equal to underscore X, Y equal to underscore Y, Z equal to underscore Z. And then finally, color equal to C. So here we go. This is our vertex position color structure. Um, and now we're going to initialize these vertices. So we're going to have three. Now we're going to have one that's one unit up and zero unit shifted. And then we're going to use D3D colors namespace. We're going to have that one be line. We're going to have one that's uh, negative or uh, no positive 1.0 f. Um, negative 1.0 f and 0, 0.0 and then d3d colors um, blue and then finally the last vertex is going to be negative 1.0 f negative 1.0 f 0, 0.0 f and then d3d colors red so here we go that's our three vertices that make up our triangle now we also need our index our indices so what we're going to do is create a word array called indices um, actually I'm going to ignore the index buffer for now we're going to continue with that one in the next tutorial when I show you how to do a cube because doing uh, indices for just um, for just three uh, for three vertices is kind of silly but um, so here we go. We're going to create the vertex buffer. Um, now to do this, what you need to do is go m device 3D create vertex buffer. The length is zero, or no, the length would be 
um, three, it's the number of uh, vertices times the size of your structure. The usage usage um, should really just be zero because we don't really care for right now. Um, for the FVF, see this D word? Remember we have our our custom made one vertex. Uh, format the pool d3d pool uh, managed we're going to do managed um, the vertex buffer it wants a reference to our vertex buffer so vb and then finally for that you can pass in null or zero because um, we don't care about that so right here is the how many uh, ver vertices here's your flexible vertex format managed pool you don't have to worry about that your vertex buffer there you go. Now, how do you uh, manage uh, the vertex buffer? How do you add stuff to it? Well, first, let's look at what it has. It has this method called lock. What you have to do before you do anything is you have to lock the vertex buffer. So, size to lock is would be size of verts. Um, uh, oh, I forgot. Um, we need to create a void pointer, pointer to verts. So essentially, this is just a storage for a pointer, a reference storage for these vertices. The offset zero, size of our verts array. Um, the void pointer pointer to uh, reference to our pointer to our verts. And finally, the flags you can just pass in zero. So we lock it. Then what we want to do is we want to do mem copy. We want to copy every mem copy is just a quick way to copy all the data that's that's in a some sort of collection into another um, collection. So we want to copy into pverts everything that's in verts size of verts and then we want to unlock the vertex buffer so we unlock it so there we go so now we've set all these all three of these vertices to the vertex buffer so now what, what we should do is we have to um, set up our the camera um, because we can't just we can't just render without having some uh, having direct 3D know the basically the space in which we are we are rendering. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a couple matrices. Now D3DX matrix is the um, structure. And we're going to create a view matrix and a projection matrix. And what we're going to do is we're going to do D3DX matrix look at left handed. We're going to use a left handed um, coordinate system. It passes, we have to pass in the view matrix. Um, we pass in the position. It says I, but that's basically what the position is. That takes in a vector 3, so d3dx vector 3. We're going to have it at 0.0f, 0.0f, negative 5.0f. What we're going to do is have um, uh, oh, and these actually should probably be stored outside, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create position vector three. We're gonna create the look at vector or the target. Target's easier to understand. And we're gonna have it target the um, just the origin. Or actually, you know what? I'm just gonna have it target the uh, Z. The z axis d3 
D3D X vector 3 um, up. Now up vector is pretty simple to, to realize. Um, it's just up. Um, it's the same for you in the real world as it is in here. So now we just pass in position. Um, of course, not. it's a reference to position. A reference to target. And finally a reference to um, the up vector. So now we have the, the view matrix. Um, now to, to set that, what you do is you go set render state d3d ts view so um, and then pass in and view oh no sorry not set render state sorry set transform um, because you need to transform the device um, the device's view matrix to that um, now we're going to deal with the D3DX matrix perspective field of view left-handed. Now this is what the projection matrix is. Now the field of view Y um, is basically uh, D3DX um, pi divided by 4. So that's a 45 degree angle. That's the field of view. It's very common. It's what most like first person shooters use. The aspect ratio is going to be static cast float with, uh, oh no, M UI client width divided by client height. The Z near is just going to be 1.0F and the Z far is going to be uh, 1000.0F. And just like before, we're going to tell the device to set the transform equal to D3DS transform projection, and then pass in our projection matrix. So what we did here was we set the projection, and here we set the view. Um, so what, what are these two things? Well, the projection matrix, if you don't know already, is the, um, you know how your eyes look forward and things that are far away from you get smaller and you only have like 180 degree view range if you look straight forward? That's what the projection matrix is. It defines how your camera views the world. Now the view matrix um, is basically the orientation of that, of that view. Uh, so it's position, it's it's target vector, so which changes based on rotation and the orient, like where the up vector is. Um, so now that these are set, um, what we need to do is do one more thing um, before we render, because we're pretty close to rendering. We want to set um, render state for D3DRS lighting. I want to set that to false. We don't want lighting because it's set to true initially. Um, and we also want to set the uh, render state um, D3D RS shading mode, shade mode to D3D shade GORAD, and I'll explain that in a second. Um, so we set lighting to false, we set uh, shading to GORAD. Um, so now what we want to do is we want to just render now. We have this clear, we have the, the present. What you need to do is before you render anything, you need to call device begin scene and end scene. And then what we need to do is we need to, using that vertex buffer, we need to um, set stream source to zero. We need to pass in that vertex buffer, um, zero, and then the, um, the stride. Um, actually that shouldn't be like that. And the stride is the just the size of that vertex position color. So we set the stream source, so basically that's just setting the vertex buffer. Then we need to set the vertex uh, format, which is going to be set to our flexible vertex format. Um, and then we're pretty much ready to render. So we do draw primitive um, D3D uh, PT triangle list 
um, start vertex 0, permanent count 1, um, and then pray this works. Uh, actually, you know what? It might not. No, it did. Um, there we go. Uh, so, yeah, so you have a triangle rendering. Now, that's all just strictly direct X. Um, what you, uh, now, this shading, remember we set to, we set the shading to Gorad. Um, what Gorad shading does is it does operations on, um, it takes the colors that you assign to each vertex and blends them across to each other. So as you can see, between red and blue, there's purple. Between green and red, there's a little bit of yellow. And between blue and green, there's a little bit of aqua. Um, it blends it across the, across the, the primitive. Um, so, that's that. Now, if we didn't, um, if we didn't set lighting off, let me show you, uh, what happens. Boom, you get a black, black triangle. Um, so if you get a black triangle, remember that you didn't, you didn't disable lighting. Um, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Um, I don't know if that should actually be a reference. Yeah, there you go. Um, doesn't have to be, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, there you go. Um, that's, that's rendering. Um, in the next tutorial, we're going to, uh, draw a cube. Um, now I can show you what that looks like right now. Um, looks like this. So there is a cube rendering and rotating, um, so stay tuned for more uh, on this.